the Smalley Institute on October 24th, the Bolsheviks made their final plans for the revolution. Their leaders were now working without sleep. Early hours of October the 25th, the Bolshevik fighting brigades left Smolny to seize the key points in the city. The railway stations, the state bank, the telephone exchange, the main bridge across the river. The revolution had begun. Aurora, the Bolshevik commissar was Alexander Belyshev. The surrounded area was lit up by our electricians, making it possible for the armed brigades of workers, soldiers and sailors to converge on the center of the town and surround the Winter Palace. Towards the evening, an order was received concerning the preparations for firing a shot on the Winter Palace. This was supposed to take place at nine o'clock. But after a delay, when the signalers reported at 9.45 that they had received a signal from the Peter Paul Fortress, I, as Commissar, gave the order for a shot to be fired on the Winter Palace.
begins the new era of Russian history. We shall end the war. We shall destroy landed property. We shall have a genuine workers' control of industry. Long live the World Socialist Revolution! Next morning, crowds gathered in front of the Winter Palace and wondered. Within eight months, first czarism and now liberal democracy had been destroyed. Only Kerensky had escaped before the palace fell. The Tsar and his family were soon murdered by the Bolsheviks, and the dictatorship of the proletariat, led by Lenin, now ruled the country. In only ten days, the revolution had transformed Russia and shaken the world. It was on the eleventh day that the snow came. In the morning, we woke to window ledges heaped white and snowflakes falling so whirling thick that it was impossible to see ten feet ahead. The mud was gone. In a twinkling, the gloomy city became white, dazzling. In spite of the revolution, all Russia plunging into the unknown and terrible future, joy swept the city with the coming of the snow. Hidden was all the grayness. Only the gold and colored spires and cupolas with heightened barbaric splendor gleamed through the white snow. Even the sun came out, pale and watery, at noon. The colds and rheumatism of the rainy months vanished. The life of the city grew gay, and the very revolution ran swifter. Red Square, Moscow, 50 years later, where once the well-to-do drove sedately in their carriages. A long queue walks towards the tomb of Lenin. They come from every corner of their enormous country, many millions of them every year, and in snow as well as sunshine. In 50 years, the Russian people have achieved much and endured much, an industrial transformation unique in history and the total destruction in war of 80% of those industries. From the dark ages to nuclear energy for peace or for war. From Lenin's first victory through a civil war and the wild purges of Stalin to a careful coexistence and a personal freedom greater than at any time since the days that followed the abdication of Nicholas II. But who dare say where the road they began to travel in 1917 will finally lead them and us.